Sure, hasn't today just been amazing? Um, I've been so inspired by being in a room full of people who care about education, um, who care about making a difference in education, and who care about innovation in, in education. All I want to do is be a school principal and partner with a business leader, but part of me also wants to be a business leader and partner with the school principal. <laughs> um, so when, when I was at RES uh, at, at UCT, I had a neighbor who was studying, uh, I think he was studying chemical engineering, either that or some other type of engineering. Um, and he had worked very hard to get there. He was from a rural school, um, and it, he was one of the hardest workers I've ever known. Um, I was from a private school, and the hardest I'd ever worked was to get a pretty girl to come to the matric dance with me. <laughs> um, but one day I was helping him with maths, and I realized that this guy couldn't multiply out binomials. This is a completely true story. And that day I realized that there's something very wrong. What's going on with education in this country? Last year I was finishing up my coursework, uh, looking to apply for jobs. A big corporate job in a big corporate city would be ideal. And I got that job. One of the banks offered me a position in Joburg and the way forward was set. But I changed my mind. I went teaching. This year I'm teaching maths to grade nines and tens at a township school called Infolini High. It's just past the airport on the N2 as you take the R300 and then the Hindle Road turn off. I'd never taken that turn off before. When I first arrived for my interview, the, the headmaster, who's a great guy by the way, sat me down and said, the school's got a problem with mathematics, we need you. Um, and he wasn't even exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> really. <laughs> my, my, my kids struggle to add and subtract when there's negative numbers involved. In what world is it okay that a grade nine kid, no, a grade 10 kid, can't add and subtract when there's negative numbers? Three plus five, sure. Three minus five, hmm. Negative three minus five, not a chance. I had to give them sheet after sheet of exercises and some of them still get it wrong. That's stuff they should have learned in grade three. Um, the, the, the other day a girl in my class, Yanda, came up, came up to me with a note. Sometimes they're nervous to speak English and asked if, for, if, if I could explain some things after class. So I said sure and during uh, break we sat down and went over some of the stuff. I discovered that Yanda doesn't understand the concept of divide. So eight divided by four, um, 10. When I asked her to indicate negative two on a number line, she couldn't quite do that. So as Yanda, who can't divide, doesn't really understand what a negative number is, has to factorize. That's like me trying to climb onto Everest in pajamas. <laughs> it would be funny if it wasn't so sad. Um, one of the boys in my register class didn't come back after the holidays. He was absent again and again. So I thought, well, it's not too uncommon. I'll give him a roasting when he gets back, find out what the story is. Then I hear a rumor that he's been arrested. So I phone around a few police stations, magistrates, courts, trying to find out you know, what's going on, only to discover that he's in Paulsmore for robbery. A few weeks back, I went to go see him to see if he's OK. Prison's not a place we want our school kids in. There's moments that make me smile, too. Um, there's Anati, who sometimes sits at the back of the class with a fat English book and a cause dictionary next to it, painstakingly tracing out the words he doesn't understand. Zianda, the girl with the notes, always does her homework. Whether she understands or not, she writes something down with the correct numbering and everything. <laughs> um, we, we have Saturday classes, and she's there like clockwork. Every Saturday, book open, ready, willing to learn. Don't tell me the problems with the kids. The problems not with the kids. The problems with the system. How do we change the system? How do we get some excellence back into the classroom? Every year, the four major banks employ upwards of 200 graduates every year. Now these graduates have done well, uh, they've succeeded at university, and they've all studied maths somewhere along the line. What if we train up those graduates a little? Give them all the training and support that corporate muscle and efficiency can provide, and then send them teaching first. What if 200 young and motivated achievers stood in classrooms that have seen little good teaching and did their utmost to improve the prospects of the kids or the future of this country? What kind of a difference would that make? I propose that the big corporates agree to a program whereby the graduates they recruit go teaching first. They send them. That 200 graduates stand, stand in classrooms around the country, rural townships, um, anywhere where maths isn't being taught properly and teach it properly. What kind of difference would that make? Well, actually a big difference. It's not a new idea. 
TGS A does it every year with volunteers. It's an idea that works. It's an idea with a proven track record in South Africa and other countries. Why don't we do it? Why don't the corporates send their graduates teaching first? So, 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 so next year, um, I'm going to be in a corporate office wearing a suit, as you can see I'm preparing. Um, <laughs> Because when, when I spoke to the HR people, they, they let me sign for, for 2013 instead of 2012, um, giving me a year to go teaching. The, the difference this year has made in my kids' lives remains to be seen. The difference it's made in my life has been very significant. I'm a graduate who's gone teaching for a year. I hope I won't be the only one. Thank you.